Okay. So we're going to play with the over limit report today. All right. So this is an exception report. All right. And it's only going to print the customers who are over their credit limit. Now, regardless of if you have a detailed report or you have an exception report, the basic format of both of them are identical. All right. Everything that happens outside the loop at the beginning is still going to be the same. All right. Uh, everything that happens inside the loop is going to be the same except for the if statement. All right. So the if statement is what makes our report an exception report. Without the if statement, it's going to process every record in the table, in the file, and it's going to print out a line for each one of those records. Okay. So let's go up here to the top and let's take a look at what we need to process here. All right. Um, I do want to print out my headings. All right. I still have the company name. My second one is going to be over limit report as of today's date. So I'm going to make that an F string. Whoops, cap locks. I'm going to make that an F string. I'm also going to come up here and say current date All right. And then in here, um, I, I'm going to use just my short date format. And I'm going to print out per date. All right. Um, I could, if I wanted to, I could set up another format that would give me this orientation. All right. Uh, my short date is uh, year, month, day. All right. This one is month, day, year. Really, there's not that big of a difference there. OK, so. Let's look what I have here now. I'm going to start with customer. And then I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. I don't know how many I have here. I think I had six, which is pretty good. And then I want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven spaces. And I want phone. I'm going to get rid of those. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I've got credit. Then I've got one, two, three, four, amount. Then one, two, three, four, five, six. Next. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and I have payment. All right. So in here, I'm just going to wipe this out because I'm going to edit it all. I want the N in phone number to line up with the P. And 
and spell it right. And the L is going to line up with the C in credit limit. The amount over is going to line up under the O. And the next payment date, P A Y date. And I want the N and the Y to line up, so I've got to come back one on that one. And then I've got payment due lined up under the Y. And in this case, I'm going to have 80. So I've gone one more there, 87. All right, looks like 87 spaces. OK. So there are my headings. <clears throat> I've got a counter over here that's going to count the total customers over their credit limit. All right, so this is going to be tote cust over. Counter. And the payment due is going to be accumulated. So that's going to be my pay due act for my accumulator. I'm still working with the cust extra table. All right, so that one is fine. So what information do I need in this one? I need the number, I need the name, I need the phone number. I need the credit limit and the balance. The amount over is going to be calculated. I also need the next payment date. All right, which I have down here. So all of this stuff came from this report right here. All right, all of this came from this report right here, which is kind of interesting. All right. But I have everything that I need. <clears throat> what some people will actually do here is technically, all right, um, in order for this exception, I need the balance due and the credit limit. So what some people will do here is just grab those two fields and then take the rest of them and put them inside the if statement. Now, just to show you what I mean from that, they will take uh, these three lines here, and these two lines down here. <laughs> and the reason they put them inside the if is because technically, if this customer is not over their credit limit, I don't need to grab the other values from the record. I grab the balance due and the credit limit. So if the balance due is greater than the credit limit. All right, so there is my exception. All right, the balance due has to be greater than the credit limit. And if it is, it will then grab these fields be because it's now and only now that I actually need these in my processing. 
because if the balance is not greater than the credit limit, it's going to skip over this. So I save myself from having to grab these fields from that record. All right. So whether you decide to grab all of your values the way we've grabbed them in the past, right, and put them up here. All right, and then we'll take these two here. And we'll put them here. All right. So that's the way we've been doing it. A and I have no problem with you keeping that same method. So grab the information that you need. All right. I know that the balance due and the credit limit are both numeric, so I have floated them. I know that this is a date, but in the field, it's a string. All right, so what did I do? I parsed it, all right? I converted it from a string to a date object. So now I can work with it the way I want. All right, so in this case, do I need any calculations? I have the number, I have the name, I have the phone number, I have the credit limit. I don't have the amount over. All right. So the amount over is the amount that they've exceeded their credit limit. So if I'm in this if statement and I'm right here, all right, I know. All right, I know that my balance due is bigger. So my amount over is going to be the balance due minus the credit limit. And that's a pretty straightforward one. All right. The payment due is 5% of the credit limit plus the amount that they are over. So the payment due is 5% of the credit limit plus the amount that they are over. All right. That's pretty straightforward. Now I want to print out my results. All right. So in this case, it looks like I want one space at the beginning. So there's my space. Then I want the customer number and the space, then the name and the space, then the phone number and two spaces. And I think that's kind of what I have here. Then I want the credit limit. All right. And after the credit limit, I want the amount over. And let's do greater than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine S. All right. And after the amount over, I have two spaces. And then I have the next payment date. Now I've got here Q. What do I have here? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten is generally a short date. 
All right. So I'm going to make that 10 S. And now I got to add another one. After that one, I need two spaces. And I am going to print the payment due. And this is going to be a dollar value. Pay due. And again, I'm going to do greater than 9S. Awesome. All right. So now I got to print out my detail line and we've done that. Now I got to do my counters and accumulators. All right. So here I want the cost over counter to have one added to it. And I need my pay due act to be updated by pay due. All right. Now, notice that I have these inside the if statement. All right. Which means these are only going to be updated when I have my exception. Now, sometimes you'll notice here. All right. You might see total customers on file. Well, if I have my total customers on file, I would have my tote cust counter, but it would have to be updated right here outside the if. Because I would still want that counter to update for every record. I want these two to update only when the person is over their limit. All right, because I only want this to total the ones that are listed. OK, so be careful sometimes with your counters and accumulators. If you have an exception report, sometimes you will see the values updated inside the if if they're only to be accumulating or summarizing the data from the accepted records or you put it outside now outside the if but still within the loop all right so if i wanted something to count every record then i would put it right here after the if statement but still inside my for loop and it would count for every record all right so i've got a uh, total customers over limit And that is my tote cusp over counter. And I also want my pay due act. Anybody doing those in Klingon now? Pay due act. It's so fun. All right. And that's going to end my re I'm not sure about the spacing there, but we'll fix that. We'll add how many we need in here once we check. So let's test it. Let's see what I got. All right. So according to my records, I've got three people who are over their credit limit. All right. Uh, my payment due. No, it's OK. It's one after the T, which is correct. 
but I have two extra spaces or two extra hyphens. They should end right there. All right. So let's go back and change this to 63. Oh, wrong one. Let's go up here and change it to 85 for some reason. And then I'm going to take this again and I'm going to put it at the bottom because I, if you look at my report here, all right, you can see how I still only had the 65 there. All right, let's pop that again. And you can see now that everything lining up fairly nicely. All right. So if you check your payment here, it's $445. So it's 5% of the credit limit. All right. So 5% of 2000 is 100. And they're $345 over the credit limit. All right. So my total is the 100 plus the 345, and that's where I get my payment due. All right. Now, you'll notice this one is lined up here. I actually need it to line up over here. So I need 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. 20, 22, 23. All right. So let's go here and add 23 spaces. Yay. And let's go see how I did. Ooh, looks pretty good. Perfect. All right. So let's let's go and check my file here. All right. So I said Sally Jones is over her credit limit and she is by three hundred and forty five dollars. Uh, it also says Gerald Benoit. Is over his credit limit by two hundred and twelve dollars. And John Rovers is over his credit limit by $200. So you can see the numbers here are working out. All right. I can see that the numbers are working out. I can also see, all right, um, that it's giving me just the three records that match my criteria. All right. So a neat little report, all right, and it does provide some very specific information for the people at this company, all right? It does provide some information for people at the company. If they see that these three people are over their credit limit and I have their phone numbers, all right, I can also contact them and let them know that they're over their limit and that their next payment due is going to be this much on this date. All right. So a lot of information in this report for the people who need it. The other thing to remember is I can only generate a report based on the information that I have available to me. All right. So in the data file. All right, if I didn't have the next payment date. I really have no way unless I can do some type of a calculation. All right. Unless I can do some type of a calculation. All right. Um, if I don't have the value or I don't have a way of finding the value, you got to realize that that's not something that they deemed was important at the time. And they didn't include it in the data file 
for the customer accounts. All right. Sometimes you'll even notice that they have extra information in their thinking initially that they might have needed that information, that data, those fields, uh, only to find out that, you know, with everything that they've done, they've never used a particular field. All right. So in a case like that now, it's almost like it's a, um, it, it's almost like it's a, an afterthought and you may decide to go back and remove those values because you're not using them and it just allows you to save a little bit of room in your file all right but creating files or uh, designing files or tables uh, which is what you're doing now in your um, essentials all right, is an, an extremely important concept in terms of when I determine what fields I need in the file, all right, it has to be based on what data I'm going to need in the future, all right? And you're not always 100% right, all right? I know not lots of examples where we've gone back and looked in a file and somebody needed certain information, but it wasn't there. All right, it wasn't there. So then they said, well, can we get it there? All right. So that means going back and making changes to other programs, especially the program that adds that information to the file and make uh, the changes there so that that information is now included, all right? So sometimes it's not an easy task, but it's an interesting one. All right, so there's one more report here on this exercise. Uh, and this one, I believe, This one, I believe, is a detail. I didn't say it specifically, but I should have. It's a customer analysis. So because it's a customer analysis, I'm suggesting that it's a detail because it doesn't say customer analysis for uh, over credit customers. All right, so there's nothing there to indicate to me that that is going to be a an exception report. But what I want you guys to do, I want you to take a look at this one and go through it. All right, I want you to take a look at this one and go through it. And then it says, how could this be made into an exception report? So basically I'm saying, go and figure out what the if statement would be in order to do each one of these. Okay. And I just noticed here, it says only display the customers from Newfoundland, but I don't have the provinces here. Uh, so that one's going to be kind of tough, but just pretend we have the province and write the if statement. All right. So I've got another interesting thing here. It says in some cases, the report might be empty especially for a uh, or an exception report because it is possible that i may have no customers over their credit limits so if that was the case all right if that was the case there would be nothing inside here so watch what i'm going to do here I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to change this 
and I'm going to change this. And I'm going to change this. So now I have nobody over the credit limit. So watch what happens when I print the report. It's empty. All right. So because no records met the criteria, it didn't print any detail lines. All right, it didn't print any detail lines. So think uh, of how you might be able to take care of that problem. All right, do a little bit of uh, do a little bit of thinking here. And ask yourself, what would I be able to do if the report is empty? All right. And then it says down here as a bonus, design and generate another report that could be used by this company. So you've got a lot of information in each record here. You've got their number, their name, their phone number, their balance, their credit limit, the last purchase date and the last purchase amount, the last payment date and the last payment amount, and then their next payment date. So there's a lot of information in this table. So what I would like you guys to do is try to figure out another report that you could generate based on this information. All right, so I want you to do this report. All right, I want you to come up with the if statements that you would need in order to make it an exception, because right now it's a detailed. And how would you take care of the problem of not having any records displayed or any detail lines because in a case like this i just went and changed this so that every customer or every account is under their limit all right it's kind of like if you have an inventory file and you're doing a a reorder report there's a pretty common example again of an exception so I only want to list the inventory items that have to be reordered. Well, sometimes you are going to have the situation where nothing has to be reordered. All right. Nothing has to be reordered and it would show up as an empty report. OK, so a couple of things to think about. All right, and a little bit of practice on this last report right here all right now anybody have did i get any interesting questions oh it's pretty quiet all right anybody have any questions now they would like to ask before we call it a day I know it's soon time for the. Um, oh, somebody has their hand up, Manny. I was going to say, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, just uh, I just want to get clarification. So with the so after this QAP fall, we're going to have the fifth one before yep. the final sprint just to be yep. OK. Yeah. And the, the fifth one is actually pretty short. It's just a couple of reports. Okay. It's a robot. Uh, all right. Just I uh, just wanted to get some clarification. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Thank you, sir. All right. Anybody else have any other questions before? Uh, are we adding the JavaScript to the GitHub? Now, the only thing you need in the GitHub is the um, is the Python stuff. Uh, but you're still going to um, attach your JavaScript to your submission. All right. 
Uh, is there a help session today? Let's go look. Yep, David's got a session right after this class at two o'clock. All right. OK, it sounds like it's pretty quiet on the Western Front. So let us uh, stop there for today and we will pick up with this next report here uh, in our class tomorrow. Um, All right. Chris, I have a quick one uh, with the TQDM um, um, yeah. module. Since uh, we discussed about uh, using external libraries, it looks like in my Python environment, I had to pip install it. Yeah. Is it OK? Oh, I perfect. Have I have that one installed on my system anyway because we used it. OK. Right. Um, like matplotlib, I have on my system because we've used it. The uh, the TQ, whatever it was for the progress bar, we've used it, so I have that installed on my system. So when I test your programs, it'll find them and it'll be no problem. Um, the only one I want you guys to be aware of is if you guys incorporate a different library, you have to let me know so that I can go through and install it before I run your program. All right. But if you've used the uh, the basic ones that we've used in class, that's perfectly fine. All right, have a good day, everybody, and we will see you guys all tomorrow.